At London's Millennium Dome, a criminal gang are in the middle of a £350 million diamond heist. But the police are waiting. When we heard the words, attack, 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 we spilled out onto the concourse. All of a sudden, out of every orifice, the SO19 guys just came out from all directions. The attack has gone in. The biggest thing for me was that JCB. Should he start revving the engine? Or if I heard gunshots, I was going to have to take action, which may involve shooting at the driver. Outside, the getaway boat is on the move. The man at the controls has radio contact with the gang. The plan is for him to make his way over to the dome's private wharf as the gang make their escape. There is a gang who are in the vault. Adrenaline's going. Everything happens in, in seconds. The thing is to overwhelm them. We were members of the public about it. We didn't want any runners with guns because he's fleeing 20 years. We took on the guy who was throwing these smoke bombs and stun grenades, and he was placed on the floor. I then move around to the side of the JCB. The driver put his hands up off the wheel, which was something that, that helped me and him. The driver is Ray Betson. As he started to climb out, he said to me, it's all right, mate, this is nothing to do with me. I work here. I knew, obviously, that he didn't. <laughs> with overwhelming force, police swarm into the vault. We made the entry using stun grenades. They generate smoke, explosions, flashes, noise. The confined space, it was chaos inside. They're on them in seconds. There's lots of shouting. They're surrounded. Frightening. They arrest two men. One is William Cockrum, the other a new face, later identified as Robert Adams. On the river, firearms officer Clive Rue is leading the getaway boat ambush. Our single goal was to get to the getaway boat What's going on in there? and ensure that didn't make off. If the driver of the boat engaged, we would have no alternative but to stop that threat using the central torso hit. The impact is likely to stop that suspect fairly instantly. The speedboat is unaware until the very last few seconds when we're on top of it. I'm in the bow of the boat, shouting, arm police, show us your hands, because the danger comes from someone's hands. He put his hands up and presented no threat. Got it. Then I formally arrested him for conspiracy to rob. He was just silent, looking very, very, very sheepish, as though his world had come to an end. Armed police next arrest Terry Millman on the north side of the river, posing as a road engineer. Simultaneously, Lee Wenham is picked up at the farm in Kent. The arrests were over in minutes, but it turns out the gang weren't armed. Unless you count this powerful nail gun, which was used to weaken the glass before they hit it with a sledgehammer. The cabinets were designed to be impregnable, but the hilty nail gun had caused the glass to fail in less than 30 seconds. The hilty had a bad reputation for doing jewelry robberies. They wouldn't have sawn off shotguns, they'd have hilty guns. It just blew my mind that all this security and they had defeated them with an industrial nail gun and a sledgehammer. All of the robbers have been secured. No one's been hurt. It's a good feeling. The headlines were great. I don't think we quite realised how much media attention there would be on it. A number of men, mostly middle-aged, were taken... The JCB digger has been left here by police. Had they succeeded, it would have ranked as the biggest robbery in history. It was a good day for, for the police that day. 
The trial at the Old Bailey lasted three months. Found guilty of conspiracy charges, six gang members were given sentences of between five and 15 years. The seventh, Terry Millman, died of cancer before the trial. The amount of evidence was overwhelming. We'd caught them red-handed in the dome trying to take the diamond, so there was no way they weren't going to get convicted. Lee Wenham got four years for the dome and a further nine years for the Ailes for the tag. There was never evidence to charge any of the others for either Aylesford or Nine Elms. These guys were cunning. They had bravado and they were certainly persistent. It took four months to plan. They used a JCB like a tank to smash their way in. They would have been in and out in minutes and they would have made a James Bond style getaway in a speedboat. The desperate men to risk 20 years. OK, they didn't hurt anybody, but if we hadn't been there, mum and a three-year-old child in a buggy could have been the other side of that tent as it came crashing through. But did the police get everyone involved?